Experts at Top Flight will show you how easy and professional looking your next covering project can be with Top Flight Monocoat. Everything is organized and coded so you can easily find the specific section you need to review. Look for the number in the top left corner of your screen. Each number corresponds to the sections listed here. John, you've done an excellent job finishing your first airplane. Everything looks straight and strong. Uh, have you decided on a covering yet? Well, the guys down at the shop sold me Top Flight Monaco. What do you think? Hey, good choice. That's what I use, too. And so does nearly every other kit builder, from first-timers to the experienced pros. That's because Monaco makes it easy to give your kit a spectacular finish. Even if you're not an expert, you'll still get great results. Modelers once covered their planes using silk cloth or tissue and strong-smelling lacquers called model dope. But that was before the Monocoat revolution. Now you just cover your model's frame in this lightweight polyester film and apply a little heat. Heat activates the special adhesive that bonds Monocoat to wood. It also gently shrinks the film to remove wrinkles and sags. For over two and a half decades, Monocoat has set the standards for top quality in film coverings. No other brand has been able to match all of Monocoat's user-friendly characteristics. Characteristics like flexibility. Monocoat is easy to position over and around tricky surfaces. And strength. Because Monocoat resists punctures and tears, you don't waste good flying days making repairs. And permanence. Only Monocoat is 100% fuel-proof. Its superior adhesive formula refuses to let fuel sneak under the seams. And last, but definitely not least, there's color. Monocoat's huge selection of rich, high-gloss hues. It's easy to be creative with so many stunning choices, including glittering metallics, eye-popping neons, and luscious pearl colors. And with so many tools available to simplify the work of model covering. Top Flight offers an entire system of specialized covering products. Monocoat is the number one covering choice of first-time kit builders. And it's the number one with champion builders for all the same reasons. Monocoat has been the secret behind countless award-winning aircraft. Rob, I can't wait to get my plane covered. I want to make sure that we've done it right, so what do we have to do first? First, John, let's take a look at what tools you have. Do you have some kind of a heating iron? Yes, I do. I've got the old uh, trusty iron here. Well, that would work, but it's a little on the large size for what we need to be doing. First of all, you're going to have a hard time getting into little nooks and crannies like around the tail here. Mm -hmm. Plus, you might run the risk of getting a little residue from the monocoat on the bottom of the iron, which in turn will get on your shirt or it could get back onto the model. Well, I, I didn't think about that. What kind of iron should we use then? I suspected you might not have the right type of tool, so I brought some with me. The first is a monocoat heat sealing tool. This little device is used for getting into the small areas. It has a, an adjustable control knob so we can set the temperature and it's small and light enough that we can get it into little areas and work for a, you know, a fairly good period of time with a, a small device. What's the cloth on the iron for? This is called a hot sock and this prevents accidentally scratching the surface of the monocoat uh, when you're ironing it on. Well, what else do we need? Uh, some sort of a heat gun. Did you, do you have one of them? Yes, I've, I've got the old trusty hair dryer. The hair dryer would work for doing your hair, but uh, for monocoat you really need something that is quite uh, powerful. I brought with me a top flight heat sealing gun. This develops temperatures of 450 degrees wow. and on the back side is a little air velocity control that allows you to uh, make it a little bit hotter or a little less hot depending on your application. It also has a two position switch so that you can put it on to cool air to let it cool off when you're done using it. Now, what have you got to, uh, to cut with? Well, I've, uh, my wife gave me the cutting mat. Uh, I'm sure it was so that I wouldn't cut the table up. And good, I also got a new, a new hobby knife and a whole box of number 11 blades. I figured we'd need a straight edge for cutting the Monaco. Uh-huh, that's good, and a nice metal one. And, oh great, you put masking tape on the back. This uh, was a good idea because this will prevent scuffing the Monaco as well. And the metal straight edge will prevent getting nicks and things. Oh, I forgot about scissors. No problem, John. I've got just the thing right here. Top flight monocoat scissors. Monocoat scissors with a sharpener built right into their included protective sheath. Having a sharpener so handy keeps the precision ground blades like new. 
They slice through Monocoat covering with ease, so your cuts are always clean and smooth. After use, just run the blades through the sharpener again, and they're ready for the next job. Well, Rob, I spent a long time sanding the model, but I think I got the wood just as smooth as I can make it. Well, that's good, John, because uh, covering is only as good as the finished preparation that goes on before you start the covering. You need to make sure that your covering of the model is just as smooth and clean as possible before you start. Is that so the covering will stick better? Well, that's partially the reason, but mainly it's because Monocoat is so highly reflective that any little surface dings and things will show up. Uh, dust, in particular, will just show right through the Monocoat after it's covered. And then it's too late, isn't it? And yes, it is. Well, wh why don't you take a good look and, uh, now be honest, is it uh, really ready to cover? There are a few little dents here, John, probably caused by bumping the model against the work surface and on the workbench. We can take care of the worst of them using this Hobbyco Hobby Light filler. This is balsa colored, and it's lighter weight than spackle, the kind of stuff you get at the hardware store. All we do is just fill the dings with the, uh, the filler. Does that take very long to dry? No, just a few minutes and we can sand it off. There's another way, while that's waiting to dry a little bit there, there's another way I can show you, and that's using water. Get this little dent, we just wet it, and then use a hot sealing iron to cause the grain to swell. This is a nice tidy way of doing it without using any filler. Wow, the dent's gone. That's pretty neat. See, once, uh, once the uh, wood has dried, it leaves a little bit of rough grain, so you need to use some sandpaper and a sanding bar to get it smooth. I use this Great Plains Easy Touch hand sander with 220 grit at this stage. Do you think this uh, filler is ready yet? Yeah, why don't you go ahead and sand that off? That looks pretty dry. Okay. And while you're doing that, we're also going to need to clean the surface really well again to avoid any of the problems of dust under the monocoat. Well, Rob, I've got this terry cloth. Will that work? Sure, that'll take care of about 99% of the dust, but uh, in order to get that last little bit out of the pores, you need to use this monocoat tack cloth. This will get the last little bit out. Wow, I didn't think there'd be that much dust left. Pretty amazing, That isn't looks it? pretty good now. Well, that looks pretty good, John. I think we're about ready to move on to the next step, and I think we'll start by covering the wing. Great. First, we need to set the temperature of the iron. Before you start, make sure that the iron is set to the right temperature. If it's too cool, your covering won't bond to the wood. If it's too hot, the covering could be damaged. Turn the iron's temperature control knob up. While the iron is heating, Cut a small square patch from scrap monocoat to use for the test. Once your sealing iron has warmed up, lay it against the monocoat patch and hold it there for five seconds. Then remove the iron and let the patch cool for about 30 seconds. After the patch is cooled, try to pull it off. If it comes off this easily, your iron isn't hot enough. When the temperature is set too high, the patch looks like this after the iron is removed. You know your iron is at the proper temperature when you feel some resistance as you peel off the test patch. You should see some wood grain attached to the adhesive side. That tells you there's enough heat to bond your covering securely to the wood. One of the nice things about using Monocoat is that it's hard to get the iron too hot. Finding a good sealing iron temperature is pretty easy. Well, now that we have the iron temperature set, what's next? Let's clear a little space, John, and then we're going to jump right into the wing. Okay. Why do we cover the wing first? I like to do it that way so that you end up covering some of the large surfaces you've used, uh, you know, where you've got the maximum mileage out of your roll. You get a feeling of accomplishment because you see something actually done. And you end up with some nice little scrap pieces that you can use for things like the ailerons, elevator rudder, and so forth. Now, let's go ahead and cut some little strips of monocoat about three-eighths of an inch wide. And we're going to use these to put into the little corner areas here on the wing. The object of the exercise is to have a totally sealed surface so that fuel can't soak into any of the balsa. That's probably a pretty good idea. Okay, cut them about two inches long. Okay. Do, do these need to be exact? No. 
just roughly. And when you've done that, go ahead and take the backing off. Okay. Okay, let me show you a little trick that you can use right there. On the backing side, take your knife and just slide it under the backing like so. Roll the backing off, and voila. That's a pretty neat trick. Is that easy? That's easy. Okay. Let's go ahead and cover these little inside corners. And if you could just hold that, John. I just made a little bend in the monocoat there. And I'm going to iron it down. Well, it looks like it's changing color. Wait a minute. That's not the color I picked out. Most monocoat will do that. Some colors are more noticeable than others. They will change color briefly while the heat is applied, but then they will revert back to their original color without any problem. Oh, it's changing back. Yeah, it does that, John. As soon as it cools off, it'll go back to its original color. Now, to do this area in here, we're going to have to cut a little hole in the monocoat. That's just a little bitty hole, just big enough for the torque rod to go through it. Slide it down, like so. That way it gets back in the corner. Okay, and that way you'll also seal off this complete area down through here. Okay, we do the same for the other two corners. Well, what do we have to do next? Probably trim this up, I suppose. Well, let's just trim this off a little bit here. Well, now that that's done, what's next, Rob? We're going to cover the bottom of the wing, John, first. The reason for this is we want to get a shingling effect. If we wrap the uh, monocoat film around the top of the wing, and then cover from the top working to the bottom, we've got this roll-off again, where the, the oil will not get down into the, the seams. Start by cutting a piece of monocoat that's a couple of inches larger all the way around, so we've got something to hold on to. First thing we need to do is to make a little hole for the torque rod. So just see where that needs to be. I'm just going to make a mark by actually dimpling the material. And just okay. cut a little hole right there that we can get the torque rod through. Should go through. Now, the magic to putting on monocoat is to get it on as tight as you can beforehand so that you don't have to shrink out a lot of the wrinkles, even though this is a shrinkable film. To do that, I'm going to tack it here at the wing root, and then we're going to pull the fabric or the uh, material this way. And do the same thing. And tighten it down there. Now I'm just tacking at this point. Pull towards the front, and we'll tack it at the leading edge, and then again here at the trailing edge. You'll notice that the wrinkles are starting to pull out. Now we go diagonally. Working in the corners, looks like. You get that corner? Okay. Just pull it down tight. Let's see, probably push against the wing with my under fingers, underside That's fingers. That's right. And then give it a little tack. How hard do I have to push? Fairly hard. Okay. You notice your colors change, that means the adhesive is getting activated. Right. Hold it until the color goes back to its original shade. Okay. Okay, let's get these two corners. Push underneath there. Once Pull again, you're striving to get out all of the wrinkles There's so that you don't have to heat shrink anything when it's done. That way your monocoat covering will always stay nice and tight. So it's kind of like the surface preparation. The more work I do up front now, the better it's going to be. That's correct. Now you'll notice down at the other end we have a wrinkle. You can go ahead and reheat the area that you've already sealed, lift it up, and then pull it out tight. Okay. Switch hands here. That's better. Now we're going to continue tacking, working in the rule of halves. That means we're going to go in the middle here, that's between these two tacks, and then the middle there between those two. And then we're going to divide again. So why don't you go ahead and do that, John? We need to pull it tight as it goes. Okay, you're pulling it tight for me? Yep. All right. If more modelers did this, they would be so much happier with their covering because 
all of the wrinkles that you have to shrink out now will just come back once the material has relaxed or been sitting in the back of your car or out on the flight line for a while. So if you don't have any wrinkles to start with, that's the way of keeping the wrinkles out. John, we're going to finish all of this tacking by sealing down the edge now, rolling away from the center of the wing, pushing the monocoat over the leading edge. Is that for a good seal? It's for a good seal. It's also to avoid puckers. We can trim the border, but we need to leave about a quarter inch overlap here at the center, okay. where this piece will overlap onto here. And as we come around, the leading edge should be all the way around the leading edge. And we can just use a knife, use your fingers as a guide. Let's see here. Do the same thing on the back there, or what do now you do on differently? The, on the back, what I'm going to do differently is, you remember, we put the little corner pieces in. Right. I'm just going to slice right through the corner here, and through this corner. This will come under the torque rod, like so. And then we can iron this down to seal up this whole edge. Okay. And you don't start in the middle and do halves and all of that? You just, just work it on down, just pulling out your wrinkles as you go. Okay. We'll do the center trailing edge. And the tip. This little piece here on the end I'm going to pull down. Again, we always want to overlap and to seal everything. Okay. How do we trim this one off? This one can be trimmed just flush with the top edge of the wing. And here I'm going to allow a little bit of an overlap just to wrap around that corner, about an eighth of an inch. Reason for that is it gives something for the top of the wing, the wing's top covering to adhere to on this little edge. We'll just finish this up now by sealing these edges down. So, how do we handle this wingtip then? It's pretty easy, John. All we're going to do is take this excess that we had on the material and pull it around to the front side. I'm going to iron this down. There you go. Can we pull on that for you? Tug it down there while I hold the wing. Get it flat across the tip. Now, I'm going to set this down, and I'm going to pull quite hard to pull this around the top edge of the wing. Does it stretch or something? Yep. As we heat it, I'll just keep pulling it around here. About an eighth of an inch overlap is all that's required. Using my fingers as a guide, I'm just going to come around and cut about an eighth of an inch inside of the wingtip, pulling the excess off as I go. Now we need to iron this down good and tight here, pulling it again from the outside to the inside. And there the bottom of the wing and the tip is now done. Okay, let's recap real quick, because you're going to do the top in a second. Okay. We'll start out by using your uh, monocoat film that is oversized. About two inches, right? About two inches overall. Place it in place. Tack here and here. So you're going to the root to the tip, and then the trailing edge and the leading edge. In the middle. Then pulling diagonally, you'll tack the two corners, the other two corners. Okay. Then use the rule of halves to start going in between, tacking as you go, pulling out the wrinkles. Think you can handle it? I think I can. Go to it. Many planes you might build later won't have the squared wing tips of a trainer. So how do you apply covering to rounded shapes like these and avoid creases and wrinkles? When you cut a section of monocoat covering for the wing, leave about five or six inches of extra material at the tip. That excess gives you something to grab onto Use your top flight sealing iron to begin tacking the covering to the wing. Follow the process shown earlier in this program, but when you get near the wing tip, stop. Don't seal down the material there just yet. 
leave some covering unattached along the leading edge near the tip. That makes it easier to take up the slack. So pull your covering around the tip. Remember, you'll want a minimum of one quarter of an inch at the seam. Cut slits in the remainder as shown to make several wide fringe strips. We call these strips fingers. By pulling on the different fingers, you can stretch the monocoat from several directions and concentrate the tightening on specific areas. Start the shrinking process by heating the monocoat at the center of the wingtip. When the covering is heated, use the fingers to pull it straight down onto the tip. Now work your way back toward the trailing edge, heating and pulling, heating and pulling. Then return to the middle and continue the process up to the leading edge. After the tip is covered, trim away the excess film. Cut it just above the center line if you're working on the wing bottom. If you're working on the top, leave enough material over the center to make an overlapped seam. Then seal the ends down. Rob, some of the planes I saw down at the shop had foam wings. Could I use the monocoat on that too? The temperatures required for monocoat would melt the foam. You would really need to use a product like Econocoat to do the job. Use extra care when covering wings made of foam or balsa sheeted foam because it can be melted with too much heat. That's why Top Flight developed Econocoat, a special low heat covering film that's perfect for foam wings. Econocoat has the same easy application characteristics as Monocoat. You can use the same tools and follow the same techniques. The only difference is that it's more sensitive to heat, so you can set your heat gun and sealing iron on lower temperatures to avoid damaging the foam. For the same reason, Econocoat is easier to melt than Monocoat, so avoid directing heat in any one spot for too long. All right, John, as a final going over, we're going to tighten the wing using the heat gun. You can see the color is doing its little changing routine here, but it goes right back. That indicates it's tight. Sometimes you'll get some wrinkles, but the wrinkles will go away as soon as uh, the heat's been applied. Also remember to keep the heat gun moving so that you don't burn a hole in the monocoat. The heat guns are hotter than the sealing irons. Well, John, now that we're done with the wing, we can get onto the fuselage. And after you're done cleaning there, I've taken the liberty of cutting some 3 8 inch corner strips, just like we did for the wing. I've folded them in half long ways. What we're going to use these for is to come into these little corners. And the reason for this is we want to create a little corner gusset so that the, sh the covering for the stab will come up and overlap this little piece. The covering for the fuse side will overlap the other piece. Kind of like the corners on the trailing edge of the wing. Exactly. When we do this, this avoids having to actually cut monocoat to size on the surface because when you do that, you score the top of the wood. That's kind of like when you're cutting glass, right? Exactly. Does that weaken the wing probably or the tail surface actually? That can severely weaken the tail surface depending on how deep the cut is. So let me go ahead and put this little strip down here in the corner. And we're going to need to do this in all six of the corners. There we go. Looks pretty simple. Yes, make sure you get it in there really well. Get it stuck down, both to the fuse side and to the stab. I'm going to trim this off. Just irons in just like that. Kind of tough to get in this corner though, Rob. Isn't there anything that's easier to, to work this corner with? When you're covering corners and edges, Top Flight's trim seal tool can help you get straighter, tighter, nearly invisible seams. The trim seal tool is obviously better equipped than a sealing iron for reaching into tight areas or for applying fine trim stripes. Like an iron, it has both high and low heat settings, so you can use it with monocoat or econocoat. But the trim tool also has smaller, interchangeable tips. There's a rounded one for sealing curved surfaces like fillets, and a flat one that can be used to seal covering down tight in corners. Regardless of the heating tool, it can be tough getting two sections of covering to meet perfectly at the corners. But if you follow this next trick, it doesn't have to be difficult. 
First, just work a small strip of Monaco down into the joint with your trim seal tool. Then, use the sealing iron to cover the adjoining surfaces up to the corner, overlapping the strip you've already applied. The seam is almost unnoticeable. Now that we've got all six of these little junctions done, we can go ahead and start the covering on the bottom of the model. All right, John. We put this in place, as I mentioned before, we just butt it up against the corner now, overlapping the little strip. And I'm going to tack it down right along the top of that strip. You're tacking down the whole edge? The whole edge. <laughs> now starting in the center of the monocoat, I'm going to work myself towards the outside edge, pulling it out tight as I go. By starting from the center, working outwards, we're going to push air out kinda ahead like, of the iron. Kind of like a squeegee. Mm-hmm. Just moves the air right out from underneath the covering. Now there's a lot of controversy about ironing down onto the structure itself, but quite honestly, when you do this, you really have much less problems in the future with it wrinkling. Well, I for sure want a wrinkle-free model, so let's do it right. Now when we get to the corner edges, what I'm going to do here is heat the edge with the iron just to soften it. I'm not really pressing it down yet. What I'm doing is stretching or softening the monocoat so that it will pull easily around that corner. It's kind of like we did on the wingtips, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Turn this over. I want to pull it over onto the leading edge just a little bit, and then we'll cut it off, pretty much like we did with the wing. Once again, on the corner, I'm softening the monocoat. Boy, that really stretches around, doesn't it? Sure does. That's the beauty of monocoat. It will really take a lot of heat and can be stretched very nicely into compound curves. All right, now we're around the corner. Have the knife. There you are. And I'm going to cut it off just on top of the stab. A little tricky around the corner here. Finish ironing this down. Pushing out towards the edge again, yep. just like before. Seems like we're repeating all of those same techniques over and over we again. We are. Monocoating is really just that. You learn a couple of good techniques, and they're applied to just about everything that you do. Doing the edges of this tail surface is just like the wing, isn't it, with the shingling effect to keep the fuel out? That's right, John. You always want to cover from the bottom to the top and then overlap the top surfaces down around the bottom to direct oil and so forth away from the seams. When you're all done with the stab here, it looks like you're doing a great job, but when you're done with it, uh, we'll move on to doing the fin, and you just do that the same way. The Smart Cut Trimmer is another tool that helps you cover corners and edges like a pro. It has two main parts, a removable spacer plate and the tool body itself which features two number 11 blades so you can cut left to right and right to left. Thumb screws let you adjust cutting depth. The shape of the tool solves several cutting problems, such as keeping seams straight down the entire length of the fuselage. Multicolor schemes are easy to create with SmartCut. By snapping the spacer plate onto the tool body with the Top Flight logo facing outward, it will cut an overlap measuring exactly one eighth of an inch. Hold the spacer plate flat against the surface while cutting. If you want a 1 16th inch overlap instead, just snap the spacer plate onto the tool body with the Top Flight logo facing down. Or you can use the part itself as a template to cut contrasting pieces of monocoat. The final step, of course, is to seal down the perfect seam you've just cut. The Smart Cut makes it easy to make smooth, straight cuts along the leading edge of wings, too. You can choose the placement of the seam to be either centered or wrapped further around by angling the wing on the cutting surface. Simply position the wing at the desired angle and cut. Smart Cut makes it easy to trim seams even in tight areas while maintaining a consistent 1 8 inch overlap. For example, place the Smart Cut flat against the horizontal stab and slide it against the fuselage. Smart Cut gives your plane perfect seams every time. We're ready to start covering the bottom of the fuse. 
but as we've run into in a couple of these other areas, we need to cover some little areas, these details, like in the landing gear grooves and around the engine cheeks here first. So we'll use a couple of scrap pieces. Just iron them down in here, and of course the reason for this is to fuel proof this area, no exposed wood. monocoat cut to size, that was good thinking. Now very simply, we just start at the tail, tack it into place, pull it towards the nose, and start ironing right down the center, stretching it into place and ironing it down as we go. Okay, now you pull that side and I'll pull this and we'll work out some of these bubbles. It's like you're pushing the, the air out to the side of the covering, aren't you? I am. I'm trying to get rid of the uh, as many of the bubbles as possible, but if you do get a bubble, you can just go ahead and either prick it with a pin or your X-Acto knife and heat the area again, or you can lift up on this a little bit, work the bubble out, or you can prepare the under underneath surface uh, to begin with uh, to make it a little more receptive for the monocoat. It's often hard to avoid trapping air pockets when you're applying large sections of iron on film. And when air in the wood and air between the wood and covering are heated, they can expand and form bubbles. But if you prepare your model surface properly, you can avoid these ugly blisters. Here's how modelers used to do it. They'd poke hundreds of tiny holes to give the air some place to go when the film was sealed down. Top Flight's woodpecker perforating tool does the same job, only a lot faster. Together, its four steel cutting wheels have over 75 tiny blades, and they'll perforate a three-quarter inch wide strip in just one pass. After you perforate the wood, lightly sand it to smooth out the surface. Then wipe off any dust with a tack cloth and apply your covering as usual. The heat shrinking process forces trapped air and gas into the woodpecker's invisible pockets. As a result, the covering shrinks tight, smooth, and bubble-free. You can use the woodpecker to avoid bubbles when applying covering on top of covering also. For example, when you're putting down a piece of trim, start by lightly tracing its outline on the intended surface. Then adjust the width of the woodpecker's cutting head to work within the size of your trim. Remove the cotter pin and axle and take off as many cutting wheels as necessary. Perforate the base covering where the trim will be applied. Again, after the trim piece goes down, you won't see the punctures at all. Just a perfect bubble-free finish. Before using the woodpecker to cover your model, you can use it to increase the bond strength when using epoxy to join wood or wooden foam. First, run the tool over both surfaces. Then apply your epoxy and join the pieces as usual. The adhesive sinks into the perforations and forms hundreds of tiny rivet-like grips. Well, there we go, John. That's the uh, front half covered. Now all that remains to be done is to trim it and we can start the sides. Once again, just use the knife. Use your fingers as a guide along the side edge here. And I'm going to make my cut about an eighth of an inch up from the bottom of the airplane. You don't press too deeply. You don't want to go into the wood any more than you have to. Now I can take this little bit off the nose. I'm going to leave just a little bit to roll into the onto the firewall. More overlap, right? A little bit of overlap. Eventually we'll paint the entire engine compartment, or it can be monocoated, but most people just prefer to paint it with a fuel-proof paint to seal it up. Or you can use epoxy. We'll measure the distance of the stab across. That's about six inches. And so I'm going to make a little slit in the monocoat here. Quarter inch wide, which is the thickness of the stab. Approximately six inches long. Put a little round. 
rounded corner on it there. Notice I cut a piece, so you cut the piece long enough, which is good that it'll reach from front to back. And once again, we put it on just like we've done in the past. We tack it at one end. In this case, I'm just going to lightly tack it to those little filler strips we had on the side of the stab, mm -hmm. just to hold the slit in position. I'm going to apply a little more heat right here at the tail end, where it'll be nice and secure, and pull it towards the nose. You're tacking the end down there? Just to hold it in place. Okay. Now, like the wing, we're going to tack in a couple more places so that this doesn't move around and create new and interesting wrinkles. Now sometimes when guys leave their models in the back of their car, out in the hot sun, they will develop wrinkles under the monocoat caused by gases expanding or because the monocoat hasn't been attached really firmly to the wood. What do you have to do there to prevent that from happening? That's actually what we're doing right now by ironing it down, pulling it in place and ironing it down tight is one way. Or you can use a heat gun and a hot glove to do the same technique. First, tack the covering in place using Top Flight's sealing iron. Put Top Flight's hot glove on one hand and hold your heat gun in the other. Heat the covering from the center outwards, smoothing it down with your protected hand as you go. This process of heating and smoothing helps to improve adhesion and eliminate wrinkles. Now we're ready to put the top piece on. And we've got this prepared piece. Once again, I've cut a little slit in it to accommodate the fin. We'll just put this in place. Make sure that it's out nice and straight. I'm going to tack it here just at the leading edge of the fin just to hold it in place so it doesn't pull away from the fin itself. And then come down the two edges. And then from here, let me guess, it's going to be the same as the sides, where you'll pull and work your way down. That's correct. Working away from the center outwards. A couple of little wrinkles here. We need to get them out before we go any further. And now we'll just work from the center. Just like so. so. If you get the wrinkles up front, they're not permanent, but if you iron them down, once they're there, they're there. For everyone to see, right? Yep. So we'll pull tight. Now right here, where we have this little upsweep of the cockpit, we need to cut the material. And you're cutting out so beyond the edge of the fuselage. Just right? on the edges. Why are we doing that? To provide a little bit of relief where it changes direction. Right up in there. Once again, we've got some little puckers trying to start here. Pull them out. Just apply the heat. Stretch, and away they go. Mm. Looks pretty good. Okay. Trim off the edges, and we'll do the front. Sometimes, John, you, you run into a situation where you've got a hatch on top of the fuselage. Now, I know your model doesn't have one, but let me show you when that time comes, this is how you do it. I turn it over, starting at the center, I'm going to work out to the four corners, diagonally, pushing the air out as we go, just like we've done in all the other areas. Cut out the four corners, and then you fold these pieces in. Of course, you can do a far more precise job when you're doing it for one of your best models. But this is generally all that is required to do a hatch. Okay, John, we're on the home stretch now, and all that remains to do is cover the control surfaces. These are real easy to do. First, we'll use a couple of little strips and attach them to the ends, like I'm doing here. 
Just tack them on all the way across. Just iron them down, go around the two primary edges. How much overlap do those need? Just an eighth of an inch to three thirty seconds is more than enough. You don't want to have a big overlap here. It's just something to hide the seam as we're doing. Once again, you want a little overlap on the leading edge. And iron that down. Okay, using a piece that's just slightly longer, you don't want to have a whole lot because it'll, you'll find that it will stick to itself very easily. I'm going to line this up with the leading edge here, the hinge side. How much are you leaving over there? Oh, you're rolling it around to the leading edge. Just rolling it around. Three eighths to half an inch is more than enough. And you do the elevators, the ailerons, and the rudder, all done the same way. But here, we want to seal this down to the leading edge. And once it's sealed down, we can trim it. You don't want to have a lot of overhang wrapping around here because you'll end up almost guaranteed with bubbles. Now bring it around the back. You notice I'm working it along this trailing edge, pushing it away. That's something we've done before, too. That's so we don't end up with the little puckers on the, the top surface here. Pull and stretch all the time, working it around. Some models, as you've seen out the field, do have rounded control surfaces. And this prevents or presents a couple of little different techniques that you have to use. Before covering a structure like this, make a way for air to escape from the open bays between ribs. Because once you've sealed your covering on all sides, trapped air will expand as you heat the film and prevent it from shrinking tight. Use a 1 16th or smaller bit to drill a hole in the center of each rib and a hole that exits to the outside of the structure. Now you're ready to cover the structure, leaving the side with the air exit hole for last. Of course, both of the following methods will work equally well on solid control surfaces. As you see here, the heat and stretch technique for covering rounded wing tips can also be used to cover curved control surfaces. Or you can use this simpler, faster method. Cut a long strip of monocoat just slightly wider than the control surface edge. Use your top flight sealing iron to seal it around all four sides. At the corners, heat and stretch to remove wrinkles. Now you can finish covering the control surface by tacking and heat shrinking monocoat onto the top and bottom. Open the air exit hole with a small pin. Well, that sure was pretty easy. Well, it is, John, when you know the basics. If you say so. So when can you help me put on the trim colors? Well, it's just going to take another evening to do the trim, so pretty much any time uh, I'll be available. Great. You go ahead, cover up the control surfaces, I'll be back. So, John, did you get everything done we talked about? I did. I got the control surfaces covered up and I got them put in the plane. But uh, I've, I've kind of done a bad thing and I'm glad you're here because I was cleaning up the other night and I knocked the wing over and I punched a hole in this beautiful covering job that you helped me do. Oh, man. What are we going to do? Do I have to recover well, the whole wing now? It's inevitable, John, that sooner or later you're going to make a hole in Monocoat. But this is when Monocoat really shines because you can fix it very easily out of the field or back here at your shop. Well, what we're going to need is a scrap about this size. While you get that, let me plug in the iron. Okay. Got some scraps over here. Yeah, I got one. How big does it need to be? For a repair of this kind, what you need to do is let's cut out this entire little bay. Okay. These we can take care of in a little while, and I'll show you how. So cut it out just about a quarter of an inch inside of each wing rib. Now I'm going to come and make little slits here at a 45 degree angle into the corners. All the way up to where the ribs are? Uh-huh. And we're, as soon as the iron is warmed up, we're going to seal these down to the inside of the ribs. While we're waiting for that, though, there's a thing you need to know about doing patches. Any patch that you do, you ought to round the corners of the piece that you apply. The reason for that is so that little corners like this tend to pick up from the, uh, the wind blast, uh, fuel, so forth. If you round them off, they're much less likely to, to come up, Makes particularly them more when, you're, when you're cleaning uh, later. 
and that's going to be a nice size there. Okay. I'm just going to iron these pieces down to the wing ribs. What I'd do if I, if I was out at the field? I mean, I, I don't have my iron with me probably, and I don't have an outlet to plug it into. Good question. What else can we do? The simplest thing you can do at the field is to use a little piece of scotch tape if you have some. If you don't have scotch tape, even things like band-aids will work. The idea is to stop air from getting into the holes that may have been punctured in a wing or in the fuselage so that you're, you're going to prevent air getting inside and ripping off large pieces. John, the uh, best way to do these kind of repairs at the field is to use self-adhesive monocoat trim sheet. It comes in five-inch wide sheets, matches every color of monocoat available. It's great stuff. You do it just like you would the patch, only you don't need the heat. What you need to do is clean the area very, very well with Windex or some sort of uh, cleaner. Make sure that it's scrubbed down very well, nice and dry. So the monocoat will have... Use paper towels, get all the oil off or nothing is going to stick to the monocoat if it's oily. Looks Clean like you, it. you've just gone here from one side to the other and then you're going around? Is yep, the basic just go around and then tighten it up using the iron. Now you can see where I had this little ding, or where you had the little ding, where it <laughs> right. hit the corner of the table. If we just heat that, it shrinks right that'll back just out. pull it right back out. And that's another one of the nice features of monocoat. Mm -hmm. Now, if you had some problems around the uh, fuselage, especially up around the engine area, say you made a hard landing and you scuffed the monocoat there, mm -hmm. it's probably a good bet that the inside of the engine compartment or around this area here is going to have a little bit of fuel on it. What you need to do in a case like that is remove as much of the monocoat as necessary mm -hmm. so that it's clean. Sand it. Then use something like a spot lifter, like K2R, that you can get in there and saturate the wood with the K2R to dry out all of the fuel oil residue that might be in the, uh, in the wood. So then you can be, when you repair, you can go right to the clean wood mm -hmm. then. Once you get all the, the, uh, the fuel out, I usually like to use some, uh, oh, just a fuel proof paint to seal the wood and then put uh, the monocoat over that. Okay. Our patch looks pretty good. I mean, from here, I can't even tell that where it was. I have to get up pretty close to see it. You can hardly tell it's there. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Well, now what can we do to jazz up this model, Rob? OK, well, let's go ahead and just start right in with some stars. And I'll show you a couple of tricks to do with them. First of all, if we cut a strip of monocoat and fold it in half, and even fold it in half again, we can cut four stars for the price of one. Stars are very easy to do. Top Flight has this little template out that comes. You can either use the, the inside of the template or you can use the punch outs to cut the stars. There's a couple of ways of doing it. The easiest way is just to position the star over the monocoat. I like to tape down the edges just so that the uh, monocoat doesn't move around and just cut the star out. You can also use spray adhesive, preferably the repositionable type on the back side of the monocoat to attach it in place and you can attach the star to the monocoat with the spray adhesive as well. You can clean that off with alcohol when everything is done. So here we go, we'll just cut four stars very quickly and easily. Once again use a nice sharp blade to do this with. And with one easy cut, we have four stars. Four stars. Now, to put the stars on, we need to use very low temperature on the iron. Why is that? Why do we use lower temperature than normal? The lower temperature will help prevent bubbles from occurring. Now, before we even started this, I'd turn the iron down to about one and a half. Position the star where you would like it, and then smooth it out. You can just use your thumb to get as many of the air bubbles out as possible. And starting in the center, work your way out. After attaching the trim pieces with low heat, it's important to turn the heat up and go over the area again for final sealing. This will make the trim bond permanently to the surface. You can do the same for the other side. Okay. Splash of color sure livens up the plane. Now, That's great. let's set the wing aside for a second and we're gonna cut some matching color swatches. Okay. Once again, we can use the 
folded over method so that we get two identical pieces. The left and the right. Here's where your metal straight edge really comes in handy. I'll hold that end. Sure. Now a lot of quality kit manufacturers like Top Flight and Great Plains will actually provide you a two-view drawing on their instruction manuals or sometimes right on the plans so that you can plan these trim schemes and do them in detail. What I'm showing you right now is just an easy way of doing it and we want to get you in the air as quickly as possible and this is a good way of handling that. I can't wait to get flying. Why don't you grab a hold of that. All right, hold it right there for you. Mm -hmm. Now, just like all of the other monocoat on monocoat applications, we need to squeegee out as much of the air as you can. Use your thumb to do that. We don't want any air bubbles, do we? Once you get to the end, start the point and in the center, and work your way down towards the wide end, starting from the center, working outwards. That way you're pushing the air out as you go. If you do get the inevitable little air bubble here or there, prick it with a pin or with the point of your X-Acto knife. There is another way of doing this, and that's to use monocoat trim solvent. Using a lint-free towel, wipe a light coat of solvent over the location for the trim. Then, carefully apply the trim exactly where you want. Repositioning won't be an option. Use your credit card squeegee to remove air bubbles. In about 24 hours, the solvent will be fully cured. So which method is best? If you're applying a large trim piece, use the solvent. It's easier to avoid air bubbles. Use the iron for thin stripes. You'll have less mess and greater control. John, to put the windows on, we're going to use this monocoat trim sheet. I've cut a couple of pieces already, the right size for here, and I made a template from your plans. To do duplicate pieces, the easiest thing to do is to use some spray adhesive to glue both pieces back to back. Then, using the same spray adhesive, put a little bit on your template. This you can clean off later with either a cigarette lighter fluid, naphtha, or with strong rubbing alcohol. Well, that sticks right down, doesn't it? Nothing slides around. Now, by cutting this, we're going to cut both sides at the same time. Just cut right the way through. Use some firm pressure and a nice new blade. There. Now we have both window, master windows cut. Those we'll come apart Self, easily yeah, enough. Yeah, the, the pressure-sensitive stuff will just come right off. Mm -hmm. And we can remove the backing. I'm going to put this on as one long piece. Now the thing with the trim sheet is you want to be able to squeegee out the bubbles as you put it on. Just going to put it in place and then working backwards as you can see here, just laying it in place, stretching it into position as we go. You can also use a very mild soapy water solution to help put this down. That does give you the option that if you miss your exact position, you can lift it back up easily and reposition it. Won't that affect the adhesive on the back side of the trim sheet? Uh, initially, it will be movable, but after you squeegee it out using a credit card wrapped with a Kleenex, squeegee out all of the moisture, it will be down nice and tight finish this off, I'm going to put some little dividing lines in here. Just lightly, just barely break the surface of the trim sheet. So that you don't cut through the monocoat. Mm -hmm. Then you can use the corner of a knife blade to pick this up. Okay, John, now that we've got the windows down, the last thing we need to do is put the striping on. It's real important that you measure 
any type of design you do on one side so that you can duplicate it for the other. I'm going to come down, make a couple of little marks with this permanent marker that isn't permanent because you can take it off with alcohol. And just like we've done in the past, we'll tack it at one end using our little alignment marks here for reference. Just tack it at one end, we'll pull it straight to the other, and then work the iron down in one direction. Okay, it's just tacked. Now, what we need to do is I'm going to just move the iron, pushing the air out ahead of it. Sometimes a good idea, if you've got a piece this long, maybe just to do a tack in a couple of other places, just to be sure that it doesn't move and you get a bow as you go down the uh, color. Pushing it out ahead. And once again, any little air bubbles we get like this. Just take a pin out. poke a hole. And we can cut that off in a minute. What I am going to do is go ahead and we'll put the second stripe on first. Just pull it out straight. You can see how just static and surface tension is holding it in place. to the end here. The thinner the stripe, or the narrower the stripe, the less you have to worry about the air bubbles, but the more you have to worry about it bowing on you. What else can we do for stripes? You can also use trim sheet, cut into thin strips, just like we did here. Or you can use sticky back material. Or, yet again, there's even a better way. And that's to use monocoat with a smart stripe tool. Top Flight designed the Smart Stripe tool specifically for easy stripe cutting. Here's how it works. Just wrap the covering around the tool's wooden roller. You can cut stripes as thin as 1 64th of an inch or as wide as 5 and a quarter inches. Each full turn of the cutting mechanism adjustment knob moves the included number 11 blade exactly 1 32nd of an inch. That's all it takes to make a perfect trim stripe one that's as fuel-proof and permanent as monocoat covering and provides a perfect color match. Here's a quick hint. When you get a new roll of monocoat, cut a two to three inch piece off of the end of the roll to allow you to make six foot long stripes. I know mine's an all wood plane, but what if I had some plastic parts like a cowling on my plane? Will monocoat stick to that? Monocoat won't stick to plastic parts very well, John. Um, what you will need to use is a fuel proof paint, something like Top Flight's Luster Coat. Top Flight Luster Coat one part spray paint comes in a wide selection of rich monocoat matching colors. With very little effort, you can paint plastic parts to perfectly match the surrounding covering. Luster Coat Primer is always recommended for the best adhesion, and it's especially important to apply a primer coat if you're painting over an unevenly covered surface. After the primer dries, wet sand the surface with 400 to 600 grit wet or dry sandpaper. Then proceed with painting. Always begin with a light dusting or mist coat, which helps layer coats stick to the surface. Let it set for about 30 seconds. Follow the mist coat with two or three thin coats. Wait three to five minutes between each. Then spray one final coat, slightly heavier, so that the surface appears wet. Within 24 hours, it will be completely dry, providing the most fuel-proof surface possible with a one-part spray paint. Luster Coat High Gloss Clear can also be used for added gloss. Luster Coat clears add fuel resistance, especially when higher nitro fuels are used. There it is, John. It's looking pretty snazzy, too. Sure does. I really appreciate all of your help. I think no I'm going to get a picture before we go out and fly.
see your hobby dealer for the complete monocoat system of covering airplanes. And your next covering project is sure to be a success.